Hi, my name is Martin Blay, and I will be presenting this session on algorithms, systems, and scalability. Uh, I will be presenting with uh, Kua Wonski, and we're both, pa both part of the craft mining team in uh, Google Research. Uh, this session will consist of three talks. Uh, first, a talk on implementing graph neural networks in TensorFlow, a talk on uh, how to implement graph algorithms in a MapReduce a scalable uh, distributed setting, uh, and a talk on implementing uh, graph clustering uh, algorithms on, uh, or parallel algorithms on multi-core infrastructures. In this first talk, um, uh, I will present graph neural networks in TensorFlow, a project that internally we call the Graph Tensor Project. So the motivation is to build common infrastructures for GNS and TensorFlow. So our team co consults with many different internal teams uh, throughout the company to apply these things to, to, real, you know, to real data sets. And so we realized that a, a large proportion of the time was spent on data representation. But that also includes other teams that in, in the company had done GNN. So we talked with everybody and everybody solved their subset of the problems in a slightly different way. And so after a second system implementation, we realized that we could do this for all systems uh, once and supporting all models, all basically everybody in a single common infrastructure. And, and, and this third implementation is, is more or less the, the shape of what I presented today. So now our goal is to build the ultimate toolkit for building and training graph neural networks on very large graphs on top of TensorFlow. And so we want to support any type of model, any kind of classification, uh, unsupervised model, etc. any types of graphs with any arbitrary graph topology and any uh, shape of features. And, and this is done by default in a distributed setting uh, in a scalable way. So our graphs have uh, billions of nodes and tens of billions of edges, and, and it has to work with that. Um, and so we also handle all the details of the irregular representation, how to produce uh, and prepare the, the input data, and to read these things out of the box and, and how to represent them in TensorFlow. And it integrates in TensorFlow, so it, it, it's uh, tightly uh, integrated with that. And that's a preview. We would like to open source this uh, uh, soon. So now the types of models we support. So we support, uh, uh, these are scenarios that we see internally, uh, supervised models where you may have a graph and the graph has uh, features on its nodes and a subset of nodes has ground truth label and we want to be able to infer based on local network structure what the uh, label should be. Uh, we have a large class of applications with uh, semi-supervised models where you have a, a graph of relationships and you have labels on some of the nodes and you don't necessarily have features, but the labels is where you want to get your information from the network. And so we apply sort of informed label propagation using neural networks, using the labels themselves as uh, features. Um, and also you have a class of more and more often of uh, unsupervised models where we have uh, something like an implementation of uh, deep graph infomax, where we train summaries at the nodes using embeddings of uh, the network around these nodes. And these node embeddings, these summaries are used as features to train classifiers and other kinds of models. The types of graphs uh, we want to support, or we, we support today actually, are uh, there's many different shapes, but these are the three common scenarios where you have a single type of node and a single set of edges between them. And so we'll call that homogeneous graphs. Or you have a heterogeneous graph, think of a bipartite or a tripartite or multipartite graph where you have distinct sets of node types and they have dedicated sets of edges between them. And we want to be able to propagate information between these uh, to, a, to a classification head, for instance. Or we have more complex scenarios where we may have multiple types of nodes and then multiple sets of edges between them, sometimes within the same type of node or between them. Uh, these edges may be directed or undirected, and we want to support all of these different uh, scenarios. Uh, the types of features uh, that we want to be able to attach um, can be scalar, so say like an edge weight on a set of edges. Uh, they can be dense features, say like a pre-computed embedding from some other team uh, that's a tensor of rank one or more. And uh, variable shaped features, like let's say your nodes are associated with a sentence, and that's the feature. And a sentence has a variable number of words, and you want to be able to provide that as a feature um, to your model. Uh, and so we, we support all these different shapes of features, and they can be attached to node sets, 
which is the common case, but uh, equally to edge sets. You may have complex features on edges, and, and, and we do have cases where we have, say, multiple similarity functions. If you, might, you, may, you may want to be able to associate the edges. And we also provide a, a place to put you know, global features. And these features are provided ultimately as uh, ragged tensors on these sets uh, in the data structure. And uh, labels, are, in this case, are traded, treated just as uh, just another feature. So they could be, you know, some edge feature could be a label, for instance, if you have some research scenario that calls for this. We support latent nodes. So we can define a set of nodes that don't have any features. And these nodes can be, you know, connected in the graph and they could be aggregators of node embeddings of nodes that are connected to them, for instance. So that's another common scenario where you, you may want to summarize what is a particular node entity and then, and then feed that information upward into a different uh, set of nodes. How uh, we uh, support all these scenarios is by, uh, well, having the user create a, uh, a description of the graph topology. So we'll call this the graph schema. And in the graph schema, you, you can define sets of nodes, if you have multiple sets of nodes, and sets of edges, and how they connect to those nodes, okay? And this is not the data here. This just describes how the data is connected. And within each of these sets of nodes and edges, and also this globally for, for the graph example, you can insert features, and you can declare the features, you can describe them. So this acts a little bit as documentation, so a new engineer comes in and wants to understand what the, the shape of the problem is. And for each of these features, you declare the data type and also the expected shape of those. The library uh, has several components. Uh, so once given a graph schema, um, we have tools to produce uh, training examples around a set of seed nodes, say, that way you have ground truth labels. And we'll call this a graph sampler. And what this tool does is it takes the graph as input, the graph schema, some configuration for sampling, and it'll join the features and produce a local subset of the graph, so say through a region-growing algorithm, and store these completed join uh, training examples as sampled subgraphs in, a, in, a, in an encoding. Uh, and then this encoding uh, uses the TF example protocol buffer of TensorFlow as a container, and it contains all the data used for uh, doing a, a, a training step. Um, this uh, we provide a, a parser for this encoding on top of TF example, and that will produce all of the features that I described in the previous slide as as uh, instances of ragged tensor. And uh, these things can be batched, of course. Um, and we provide a library of graph operations that allow you to say abstract, you know, extract uh, the sparse adjacency matrix, manipulate it, uh, mask out some nodes, including masking the corresponding edges, and so on. And then this is provided to a feature encoding step uh, where categorical features can be embedded, which is, by the way, the reason why you, you may need to support multiple features per node. You can't pre-embed those things. Sometimes you train the embedding as part of the model. So you still need to, to contain the original categories uh, before before you you concatenate all the features and, and, and pass them to your model. And we'll have some tools adjacent to this, like a tool to produce statistics on the sample subgraphs. And this is useful, for instance, uh, for debugging uh, to understand what your sample looks like, you know, whether your sampling configuration is right, or also for tuning, say, hardware that has fixed size buffers like TPUs, where you may want to set a maximum size for um, those fixed size buffers. Now our approach to scalability goes uh, via uh, uh, sampling uh, on the receptive field. So you get, you give, you provide a set of, of nodes of interest, and then our, our data preparation tool will go and, and follow edges and, and, and grow a region around it, and then join that with all of the features and edges. Um, mm -hmm. And so this is how we're able to produce independent samples and, and scale this. Now, this, the scalability works in uh, sort of the normal way that uh, TensorFlow neural networks uh, scale, meaning we have a set of uh, shared model parameters um, that live on uh, parameter servers that are dedicated, dedicated to this, and then we start a large number of worker jobs that fetch the latest version of model parameters, read the packaged sample subgraph along with all the little features that I described before, apply a single uh, step of training, compute some gradients, and then they send back the gradients to the parameter servers, and eventually these parameter servers coordinate to, to write out uh, sharded files of checkpoints if they're very large, 
And so this is how we can scale. Uh, there's no coordination. Uh, this is an asynchronous uh, setup. We could make it synchronous too, but in the, the general case, it, it, these workers can work asynchronously and we can just add more workers. Now the data preparation stage or graph sampling stage, we encounter two common scenarios. First scenario where you're given a graph, so we have many container formats for sharded, you know, large graphs, and we can apply this, uh, this sampler can apply region growing and then package all the features, but also when there is no graph, so a client may, may have an idea and they don't necessarily have an, uh, a graph, and so we can take the data set, and uh, if the data is defined as, as tables, uh, that have relations to other tables, right? So they have natural links. Uh, the, our sampler can be configured to sort of follow these and, and, and produce a subset. So given a set of nodes of interest, fetch the related nodes, follow these links, grab all the features of interest that are defined in the schema, and then continue and so on and, and produce a sample for these. And these produce uh, nice heterogeneous models. And those are very common. Or we could build a graph using the same technology that uh, Jonathan Halcrow described earlier today in the, his presentation, the Grail tool. Um, and uh, basically this, this involves uh, defining a similarity function over the set of entities and then running this tool that uses sketching and uh, locality sensitive hashing to produce uh, you know, a graph uh, on very large data sets. And then we can run the regular sample on top of these. Now, for external release, uh, we want to provide conversions for graphs that fit in memory, say uh, graphs you could express as a network X uh, library graph uh, from Python. So if you have a graph that fits there, that you should be able to convert that directly to graph tensor format and then run it uh, in a parallel way using the distributed setting that TensorFlow makes natural. Uh, or for a larger graph, we're going to have a version of our, of our scalable sampler that uses um, Apache Beam technology, and that, that should be runnable on uh, Cloud Dataflow or on your own Spark cluster. And um, th this, uh, this is similar to what we do with our internal technology stack, uh, but that's something that can be you know, more easily ported and, and work outside either on cloud or on your own machines. And we'll have cons uh, custom cons converters for a, a popular research data sets. So right now there's this uh, Stanford effort, the Open Graph Benchmark, so we should have a converter that, converter that allows you to take that, ingest it, and then produce it as, as samples so that you can run it in a distributed fashion. And we'll also have a builder API that you can call to make your own encoders. Our utility library will allow you to do things like ex extract a sparse uh, tensor corresponding to the to make the adjacency matrix out of the, the encoding that we provide. So you can manipulate it. You'll have functions to insert self-edges, which is also very common. Uh, convert this uh, directed graph to undirected if, if desired, or mask out nodes that involve also masking out their corresponding edges, or just mask out, mask out some edges, so you can do things like edge dropout and things like that, um, and more. And it'll also have building blocks to build simple convolutions, so that you wouldn't have to use any API, you could you could do it by hand if you were just using this. Um, now, there will also be integrations. Uh, so we are working with uh, the, the team in, Deep, in DeepMind that applies uh, GraphNets to uh, internal clients. And so it'll uh, be integrated with the open source uh, version of GraphNets. So GraphNets currently doesn't have a solution to ingest uh, or prepare data. The examples they provide, you, you have to do that work. But uh, with this, it'll be able to just uh, take uh, graph tensors as input and directly uh, work on them. So you'll have a toolkit for the front and also a toolkit for building models. The neural structured uh, learning team is focused on graph regularization. It'll be integrated graph nets and uh, probably eventually also directly with graph tensor. And so what they do is if you already have a model, they can insert another stack of neural networks on the side, ingesting related uh, data. So I think of a one hop neighborhood. Um, and so it'll be able to use graph tensor the same way. And we're also preparing uh, an, external, an external version of uh, our API. So internally, we use a, uh, an MPNN-like API. It's, it's based on the MPNN paper. But uh, we're making one now that's going to be very tightly uh, working very well with the graph tensor directly so you'll be able to use the data structure directly um, uh, using this new API. And these, this new graph container will be a TF extension type. So that can be passed around Keras layers and it will support uh, batching using the regular TF data uh, uh, infrastructure of TensorFlow. Um, 
And this is it for my talk. Thanks for your time. And Kuba will now present uh, on uh, scalable uh, graph algorithm implementations. Thank you.